the genesis of the exhibition Malevich and the American Legacy came from a number of places, actually. But one of the most important places that it came from was from a 1974 review that Donald Judd wrote for a group of pictures that were shown at the Guggenheim, a group of Malevich pictures. It was the first time that such a large number had been seen by the American public. And Donald Judd writes beautifully about the Malevich pictures, but he, he's quoted as saying, Malevich is like unblended scotch, single and free. And I loved that quote. I thought it was absolutely as American as you can come. And seeing American artists in the context of this amazing Russian master was something that we really wanted to explore here at the gallery. We were so uh, blessed, I guess that we could say, to have a collaboration with the heirs of Malevich. And we start the exhibition with four suprematist works, which are absolute masterpieces, absolute icons, absolutely as fine examples as you can get of the artist's work. And there are only 85 suprematist works, approximately 85 suprematist works that he ever created. 22 have been lost or destroyed. 47 are in public collections. You do the math, I can't. But in any case, you have fantastic examples here. Three of these pieces came from 1915. That was the breakout year for Malevich. That was the year that he curated his own exhibition. It was actually January of 1916. But it, in 1915, he created these works. And one of uh, the most interesting examples, of course, they're all incredibly interesting examples, is 18th Construction from 1915. Again, from the 010 exhibition. Um, and the square format of the canvas is something very important. The square was the perfect form for Malevich. He was looking to get rid of any attachment to the physical world. He wanted to explore a dimension that was beyond the third dimension. So we're looking at absolute pure abstraction in 1915, which is astonishing. Even before Mondrian, sorry for all you people that are Mondrian fanatics, but I'm, I'm Malevich'd. So in any case, you had these four fantastic pictures, three of which are from 1915, which was the breakout year for Malevich. You have a later example of, of mystic suprematism. Uh, my son, who has opened my eyes to many things, he's three and a half years old, I showed him an image, and he said, Mommy, look, it's the sun in a tree. And I thought that was fantastic, because he's coming to this with the most pure eyes. Um, but you can see such wonderful things when you get up close to these works, which one might frown upon at um, a museum with a stanchion, but we here can really look at some of these pieces and see the hand of the artist, these fantastic pencil marks, the smudges, the, the change in this particular piece. Um, it's something that you really need to explore and look. Part of this entire exhibition is about looking. It's about creating the, these links, the trajectory, but it's also about the idea of legacy. What does legacy mean exactly? Legacy can mean many different things. There are people who were formerly influenced by Malevich. There are artists who were conceptually in, uh, influenced by Malevich. There are people who didn't even know they were influenced by Malevich, and there are probably artists who never even thought about Malevich for a second in this exhibition. But the links do exist. And part of this whole amazing journey has been to see the artist's reaction to this particular group of pictures um, for instance, Richard Serra, who we have a fantastic example of his work over here, um, has been visiting us and guiding us a little bit too. Uh, and he has certainly been vociferous about uh, which works he feels would speak best to these suprematist works. We had this wonderful conversation with him, and we looked at Malmo role in relation to the circle and the triangle, which you'll see all the way on the end, the 1915 piece. The idea of weightlessness, the idea of pure form, the idea of materiality with Richard's work, and the idea, again, of um, weightlessness with this wonderful picture from 1915. So again, the dialogue exists, and people who come in are creating their own dialogue. They're looking again and uh, seeing things for the first time. So there's an excitement with that. I have to say, when these pictures were first brought into the gallery, there was a palpable feeling. They are absolute masterpieces, and we are, again, 
honored to have this chance to work with such a, a rare, important, and amazing pieces.